Hello and welcome to Little Steps Live. I'm Leah from Little Steps and today we are live from Bookazine in Central and we are talking to Janice Lau. We're going to be learning all about how to make STEM fun for our kids. So just a few uh, quick reminders before we get started. I wanted to let you guys know that we are live twice a month to keep you in the know and on the go. If you ever want to be reminded um, of our live sessions directly to your phone, you can go to our Facebook events page and just click interested on any of the live sessions you fancy, then reminders will be sent directly to your phone so you won't forget about them. You can also sign up to our weekly newsletters across all of our cities in Asia from Hong Kong to Singapore to KL. The link is in the description. And finally, please Feel free to ask us questions, leave us comments and interact with us right here while we're live. Okay, let's get started. Mm -hmm. So STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Math, or Maths if you're from Australia like me. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets all the credit in university majors and it's the fields that young professionals are choosing to work in these days. But if we want our children to take interest in these subjects, we need to instill them into our children um, through our daily interactions and we need to start from a young age as well. So how do we as parents get our kids to love STEM at home? Well, today we're talking to a STEM professional who's going to give us lots of tips and tricks about making STEM exciting for our kids. As parents, we're going to learn something new today and take home handy ways to engage our kids in one of the hottest topics in education today. So welcome to Little Steps Live, Janice. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, <laughs> um, I'm just going to let you all know a little bit about Janice. She is a multi-awarded environmental scientist who was awarded the 2019 Edie Sustainability Leader of the mm -hmm. Year. Janice was also named in Forbes magazine in 2018 as one of the world's top female sustainability leaders. She's also been a featured subject of the American children's book, Everyday Heroes, this one here, <laughs> Women in STEM Careers. So Janice is really the ideal person to talk to about STEM today. And gosh, Janice, you sound really smart. Okay. Thank <laughs> so, you. <laughs> welcome. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, so I, um, I'm an environmental scientist, as you had mentioned, but I'm also an economist. And the economist is more because um, my father's actually Chinese and my mother's Filipino. And my dad, as a Chinese immigrant, those who have parents who are Chinese immigrants, uh, you probably know what that's like. Um, my dad wanted a plan B. He just felt like, I can't just make you take environmental science because what are you going to do with your life? Right, afterwards, yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I'm paying for your university fees, so yeah. you need to follow me. So I was a very obedient daughter, maybe the only time I was very obedient. <laughs> um, and I said, fine, I'll just take a plan B course. And I actually did economics, and I'm so glad I did it because it, you know, now I'm working in corporations, doing sustainability, so it's been very helpful from it's that It's a great aspect. background degree to have as yeah. well. Yeah, and the thing I'm most proud of is not so much my job but the fact that I have another full-time job obviously as a mother to my very energetic <laughs> children nine-year-old Esther and seven-year-old Isaac cute yes <laughs> yeah oh, lovely okay so today we're going to split our chat into three main areas of focus mm -hmm. we'll begin with what age to start stem learning then we will talk about what we can use at home mm -hmm. and we'll finish up with how to discover stem activities outdoors Okay, so let's jump right in. Okay, cool. so Janice, what is an appropriate age, do you think, to start learning STEM um, at home? That's a really, um, to me, it's a, a question I get all, often asked. Mm -hmm. Like parents would say, should I teach my one month old? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Maybe a bit uh, young. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wouldn't, I mean, of course, I, when looking back, um, when I had, you know, my babies, <laughs> I remember not actually, when they were babies, like maybe one month, two months old, I wasn't really doing much. Right. Um, and also because I wasn't getting much sleep, so that's another thing. Um, I think it really happened when they were starting to be more curious, you know, when the child is so trying kind to... Kind of toddler age, do you yeah, think, after about one? Yeah, but even six or? months, actually, oh, okay. when wow. they were, you know, trying to touch shapes or they were trying to learn how to walk. Okay, so from six months, you yeah. can start introducing STEM at home. Wow. Yeah, so it's things like shapes and they would look at shapes and I, and it's just introducing this is a triangle, this is right. a rectangle and putting it into the shapes order. Yep, so basic math. Very basic. Yeah. Um, I wasn't teaching them counting or whatever. <laughs> um, and then that just 
go to the park, for example, um, I would just say grass or tree. Okay, so getting some science yeah, in there. Yeah, and, and seeing butterfly, rain, you know, that, that right. thing. And suddenly got them more interested in science. Mm -hmm. So what I was trying to do at a very young age was making science real to them without actually calling it science. Right, okay. Because I think with us, I mean, even when I was young, when you say science, people are suddenly like, oh my God, I'm so intimidated. It's a bit serious, right. Yeah, so I'd never actually said yeah. the word science until later on when they said actually this was science yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay yeah um and what toys or activities do you suggest for younger kids yeah as i said shape yeah. sorter shape definitely sorters, okay. um even the little mobile musical mobile right okay because it moves and so they're probably thinking like how is that moving right so and just to get them thinking, thinking, about, thinking things. about things yeah um but also as i said just go to the park it's free <laughs> and start pointing out stuff. I think because Hong Kong lifestyle is so, it's, it's just so fast, we mm -hmm. just sometimes forget to just stop and take a breath. Right, it's and very true actually. Yeah, yeah and so when in the park, you can actually show them things rather than just letting them play around and just saying, oh, here's a grass, you know what it does, there's an ant, you know, that sort of, just so that they have an idea, oh, these are the things that are happening around our world. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and this is a tricky question for you, okay. so <laughs> get ready. How would you introduce maths or science activities to a child who's not really interested in those, uh, in those areas? And yes. how do you keep them engaged? Yeah. So my daughter Esther, who's nine, uh, she actually started off as the one who I feel she'll be my rebellious 18 year old later on. Uh, <laughs> we know where she got that from. So um, she actually never like, initially she was very intimidated by maths. And she loved art, and okay. I always get parents asking me, what if my, my daughter or my son really loves art, what am I going to do about it? And they're not interested in math. Well, you just made that assumption, right, that they're not interested. Actually, maths is in art, when you draw shapes, and how do you draw... So my husband is really artistic as well, but he also loves math. Okay. And um, he was teaching Esther how to draw a dog. <laughs> And just saying, break down the dog the by shapes. shapes. Oh, that's clever. Right. Yeah, here's an oblong and a circle and two circles and a dot and maybe a rectangular body. And then she starts laughing because it obviously doesn't look like a real dog because right. it's, a real dog obviously is not has doesn't have four curves. <laughs> um, but it's it got her interested. I think for me anyway, it was us trying to understand why does she like art? And it was because she wanted to create stuff. Okay. And that's later on, I'll talk to you. That's yeah. how we kind of connected the coding to her. Right. Because I knew, I was like, oh, you really like making stuff. Oh, okay. I, I just kind of like tucked it in and just say later on one day I might be able to kind of hook an interest on that. But that was one thing we did was just to... It's really yeah, understanding your child's yeah. interests. And don't and then, force them into, you have to learn counting. No, no, right. no. Okay. It was like, oh, how about we show you shapes? And mm -hmm. then um, I think it came then we, I think we, what we did was we started um, explaining more or less so yep. we would use how do you create prime um, you know colors okay. or primary colors so keeping it art focused so yeah. finding the area that she was interested in and, yeah. and kind of building maths into that I know there was a level of subtlety in it right <laughs> <laughs> yeah Is it all parenting yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Okay, um, just a reminder, you're watching Little Steps Live. We are live with our STEM professional, Janice Lau. So please do ask us any questions you have while we have mm -hmm. her with us. We're going to move on to our next topic, mm -hmm. which is what we can use at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what are some daily activities that you would suggest doing at home that kind of incorporate STEM? Like baking or, or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I, I do actually something crazy. Um, I hope people don't think I'm too geeky. So my <laughs> kids are excited like any other kid that, you know, summer's getting close and you know school is about to end so they start doing a countdown like 15 days before class ends right and yeah, just me being geeky <laughs> I'm like can you write that in different math equations so like 15 is it um, 7.5 times 2 they have to write it oh wow okay yeah and yesterday this has just actually happened my daughter uh, my son was complaining that because it's 39 days before summer starts and he was complaining 39 is such a hard number like, what is it? How do I do this? And it actually gives me the opportunity to explain to them, you only think it's hard because you've never done this number before. So I always try to make it almost like, let me tell you a secret. I'll give you a secret. So okay. I'll start giving math tips. And if you do it this way, and you say, your classmates don't know, only only I'll give you this secret. Right. And it's, I feel like I'm a kindergarten so teacher and I'm having right. this conversation <laughs> with the kids. Like, let me tell you a secret, okay? And then they start like, oh yes, please tell me the secret. And okay. it's it's really funny how mm -hmm. 
they absorb that information rather than if I was in the classroom and say, learn this number. And they just tune out straight away. Yeah, so yeah. that's what I do every day. Okay. <laughs> and it's going back to what are they interested in. They're so interested in school being out. Um, not the, They love school, but obviously they're looking forward to um, having summer, um, you know, their summer vacation. So I hooked on to something that they were really interested in. But other things I would do daily is if you're in, I mean, if you're not into the geeky side, which is I which like I've maths, done with the maths right? equation. Um, if you're into baking or if you're into cooking, there's yeah. math in that. Like, yeah, so measuring things out. So or even yeah, just counting. letting them taste something, like a soup, if it doesn't have salt, what does it taste like? Okay. And then you say, Let, I'll show you a bit of magic, and then you put a bit of salt, and you like, taste it. And it tastes good. Like, I, I can't even explain why when you put salt, it starts to taste good. I really have no clue. I need right. to do a bit of research on that. that one. But it's like almost like showing your um, your child, like, hey, I'm, I'm so the magician. Might, I know. We have a, a sweet tooth, so it's sugar that we have to add <laughs> in, my, in my household. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's these tiny things, the things like um, even, um, you know, just explaining to them how the lights work. Or explaining to them why the light is broken sometimes okay. everything to me is an opportunity to teach them about science yeah or you know this weekend it was so humid right <laughs> so the kids were complaining about it being humid and then I start explaining to them do you know why it's humid you know or when it's so raining this, um something that you lead or do you wait for your children to ask questions always wait for them you wait for the children yeah, to I always ask think questions. what is the hook because okay. if I'm if the reality is there's obviously the nine and seven yeah already at that age they feel like oh mom like right. oh you're gonna lecture her again right another mom talks yeah okay. but if it's them then i they're already interested in the yeah. topic mm -hmm. so they know it's actually not mom led even if it's kind of that's where i got it diverting them towards yeah so i always okay. it's always about learn knowing more about your child and be and really listening to what they're saying yeah, yeah. i love that okay and you're definitely the right person to ask this question to because her nine-year-old is coding HTML. That's amazing. Um, how do parents encourage early coding skills at home and can you recommend some apps or games? Yeah, so when we started um, this coding situation, <laughs> um, I was like every other parent. I am lazy <laughs> and I like to have a life. So there are days, other times in the weekends when I don't want to be bothered. So yeah. I just give them the iPad because that's sure. usually yep. what Most I am, that's me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel very guilty about it because, of course, the American Medical Association already said don't do that. But, you know, kind of need a bit of my sanity. So I do give them the iPad and I just realized, um, how can I get them out of it? Like, how do I, what can I get out of this? That's right. what I was thinking. And because Esther is really creative and I thought, surely she must want to be able to play with her own game. And mm -hmm. so I suggested that to her and, all, you know, as expected, her eyes lit up and she's like, can I do that? And I said, totally, if you learn how to code. Oh, and the okay. thing about, she was seven. Seven years old at the time? I think or six or seven. At that time. Did she know what coding was? She had was? no clue what coding was and therefore her reaction was like, sure. Okay. If you had told Something us, new. we'd yeah. be like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> but she had no concept um, of no what, concept, what it was yeah. right yeah. whether it was difficult challenging yeah. no clue. okay Which and I you called it coding it. you said it's it, you're going to learn this thing called coding and she was like sure okay yeah i even said to her actually mommy and daddy don't know how to code okay and she's one of those kids who are like oh i want to do that right <laughs> so it's part of me knowing what esther's like mm -hmm. and just kind of you know um leveraging knowing how to play that, that. Yeah. so she did start coding and um, and what did she start with what she started she start with, with scratch Yep. Scratch Junior, okay. yes, um, and really loved it. Um, but before we started coding, actually, I remember we were just teaching her the very basics. You don't even need to code. You can just say, go to the left, go to the right, just right. so she has a bit of an idea of how coding works. Right. Um, and so then we brought, then we put her up in a coding school. So you school. would tell her to just like take one step to the left and one step, and she would physically do that? Oh, yes. Okay. Just so she has so an she idea, this about, is what I'm trying okay. to do. Yeah, to following this. the instructions yeah. to the angle. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, and then my husband is a computer uh, specialist as well, so he started teaching her Scratch Junior, and then that's really where it, you know, started. Um, and I think then so, uh, yeah. Scratch Junior is a good one to start for six-year-olds, is it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Definitely. Great. Um, it helps that they know where the right and left is. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes uh, this is a good trick. If you do like this, yeah. the L is the oh, one that's, that's right. the correct yeah, L. I should so. use that. I didn't think about it. I'm like, right. So now my boys are always like this. So, yeah, because yeah. it. Yeah, because sometimes the instructions are right. No, it's left, and they're like, it does oh, confuse is it? them for sure. Yeah, I still yeah. get confused sometimes with that. So. <laughs> um, or even counting. 
it helps that they can count because take 10 steps. Right. If they can't count, then, then they're, they're too young. Yeah, they're okay. too young. Um, yeah, so then we thought, okay, she's really interested in coding now. Um, that we need to give her to the professionals. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> uh, I'm not a coder, nor is my husband, even if he's, a compu- he's in computers, but he's not that type of coder. Okay. So then we had, we got, uh, we enrolled her in a coding class in Chungwan, and okay. she has And there seems it. to be a ton of them popping up around Hong Kong right now as mm-hmm. well, so. Yeah. There's lots of classes. Yes. Yeah, available. Yeah, and so, um, and so, yeah, she's been doing HTML, which Amazing. I had no clue. I mean, I did have a clue. I paid the fee, and I saw it was HTML, and I was just looking like, really? <laughs> <laughs> you and can't even really... test her, I guess. Like, yeah. I would have no idea about... <laughs> Like how to code HTML, so I wouldn't even be able to test my kids. Yeah. And, yeah. So and then because she has a younger brother um, who's seven, yeah. And there's a level of sibling, sibling rivalry competition happening, friendly competition. Um, the brother now wanted Isaac now wants to do the same thing. So we then went through the same motions again. Right. And then just recently, what we're doing now is there's a thing called Lego Mindstorms. It's okay. a bit expensive, but um, I find it. Is this a computer cool. game or is this like an actual? It's an actual Lego. Okay. And you program. It's a robot. Oh wow! Which you, prog- you can program it however yes. way. Go to the left. Go to. The, it's like Scratch Junior. Okay. Go to the left, go right. To the right. But go it's to an me. actual thing that you construct out of Lego. Yeah. That's cool. So because Esther is more advanced in coding, yeah. so she and Isaac have decided to divide the labor. I love this whole corporation type situation. So so much more comes into coding than just like... Yeah, the, who's going to do right. what, right? Yeah. So you have to build the robot. Yeah. Esther is like, oh, I'm not so sure if I want to do the Lego thing, the Lego bit. So Isaac would do that okay. because he's really interested in that. Sure. The other side is Esther's really into coding. Right. You can actually program this robot to move left, right, jo- well, you know, whatever, move... 15 steps from here turn whatever Mm -hmm. so that's her that's her side of the uh yeah but it also teaches teamwork yeah no because they're like literally they were about to strangle each other over the weekend as well i remember yeah because they're like make it move to the right and s is like i'm making it move to the right and how advanced is this lego um robot is it something that you know how to control or is it yeah actually i can if i i'm sure if i can if you concentrate yes um (laughs) (laughs) um yes i I just i don't want parents to feel like they have to know everything the reality is i don't so it just happens my husband is really into it okay and um hence he's the one over seeing the whole operation cool yeah yeah okay. so that's what we've been up to <laughs> well, exciting okay so there's some good apps and games for you guys who uh, want to encourage coding at home to get into oh yeah one thing i sorry which i sure. wanted to say one thing i really found one one app that was really really helpful is hopscotch okay yeah is this one just for phones i think i have heard it's about only hopscotch. For, phones. It's only for, for phones yes okay. only for phones but just to get them build their con get, get them getting them to build their confidence in right. coding yeah. Is this like a game that they create? or Yeah, it's yeah. a game they create. Oh, wow. And other kids can play with it. Right, okay. So from that, you're like, oh, my God, a couple of people are playing with my game? Like, Esther couldn't believe it. She's oh, like, wow. whoa. Right. And there's a level of confidence in, confidence building in that, in totally. that situation. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah, yeah. creating something that they can share with their friends. Yeah, and, yeah, and then they're like, I oh, you that. really like this? Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so hopscotch. <laughs> hopscotch, add to hopscotch, hopscotch to the list. Um, and Janice, would you say it is important to develop STEM-friendly vocabulary at home, or you don't really need to? Um, in, you, the vocabulary has to be aligned to the kid's age, obviously. I mean, right. I'm, I'm not going to start talking calculus in front of my, my child. Yeah. So I do try to keep it to the level that they understand. And I do a lot of analogies, and I do a lot of storytelling. So one time I decided I would do a funny game where I would let them memorize the first 10 elements in the periodic table. I am wow. that geeky. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, it was more of fun than, yeah. than, than anything. I hope, I hope anyway, please trust me, it's more fun. <laughs> um, um, and I told them a story, and each item that they remembered was actually a, a item, an element in the periodic table. Oh, okay. Like I would say, oh, imagine you have a water bottle. Imagine that the water bottle is tied to a balloon. Right. So it's hydrogen, helium. So then they start so you remembering. incorporated all of the elements. Yeah, because I yeah. learned it. I was doing this um, memory game, and mm-hmm. s- this guy, um, Jim Quick, actually, he was explaining, and I'm like, oh my gosh, my kids are gonna love that, and I started explaining to them. Yeah. So. I'm, what I've done is, in a way, I've tried to make science much more real to the kids and much more, I mean, not not too intimidating for them and even funny. Right. So when they try to remember oxygen, it's not oxygen, the air we breathe. I tell them there's two ox brushing their teeth. I love it. So you're bringing fun into into the science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And really? then my kids yeah. are like, what? And then they start laughing mm-hmm. and they just remember it. Okay. So the crazier your story is... I just, I was so amazed at the human brain. The crazier stories, the, 
I mean, that, and the funnier it is, the, the more they remember. Yeah. Like when carbon, for example. Okay, what is our what is our trigger for carbon? I said car. The ox is in the car, eating ice cream. Yeah, and you know, and they're just laughing. Like, why would an ox be in the car? And you know, you know this sounds like a really good story that you could write, like a children's book. With yeah, that. <laughs> stories oh, about that might the, uh, be the elements. For... Maybe something to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, this has all been so informative, Daniel. Yeah. Thank you. Um, We'll get started on our last topic now, which is how to discover STEM, STEM friendly activities mm-hmm. outdoors. Mm-hmm. Please do ask us any questions you have while we have our STEM expert with us. Okay, so Janice, what are some outdoor activities that you would suggest that we can do and, and what age would they be appropriate for? As soon as you can so bring... You mentioned the park. Yeah, Definitely. Park, I'm, you can always okay. find me in the park. Yeah. <laughs> and I know it's not usually easy to find in Hong Kong, but if you're determined, you'll be able to find a park. Right. So Just a reminder, you are watching Facebook Live um, and we are talking to Janice Lau. We are learning all about how to mm-hmm. get our kids interested and excited about STEM. Um, we've talked quickly about, you can go back and watch it later, we've talked quickly about um, what age to start and what we can do at home and outdoors. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to ask you a question because you mentioned um, that you're able to like make up stories about the elements mm-hmm. and, and talk to your kids about electricity. Mm-hmm. What would you recommend for parents like me who don't have a science background? Um, if my kids are asking about electricity, is there a website that you would recommend me going to mm-hmm. so that I can answer um, yeah. their questions about electricity so there are two way. ways yeah. um, obviously I know because I have the background I'm able yes. to figure that out um, what two things I found one is you can just google it and s- put electricity in simple way in a okay. simple term right. and there's there's a couple of websites but what I've also done is I've set up my own website because so many parents have asked me the oh, same okay. question um, and I've decided I'm now deciding to maybe write it out so right. that it just gives a bit more confidence and to is the parents. It covering science topics mainly yeah. Yeah. And, and math as well because okay. I love math and yes. I know it's not often that you see someone who loves math. So yeah. and because I'm, as I said, I've been teaching my kids algebra, for example, wow. but doing it as almost kids are like seven <laughs> and nine. That's very impressive. Um, yeah. And these these are actually my favorite books. These are awesome because they're like comic books. Okay. And they explain science and math. So you can actually get so these books. everything you need to ace science in one big fat notebook. That sounds like a fun title, actually. Yes. And if you open the book, it's like being given the notes from the most oh, wow. smart person in class yes. who took notes for you. Love that. And what age is this appropriate for? Um, like from, it could from seven. From like, seven, like, yeah, okay. So if I don't know, because science is huge, right. right? So I may not know the answers to every question. And or am I, if I'm lazy, yep. I'll just say go get the science book, find it out yourself. Okay, and then there's another one here, the math, maths, which is everything you need to ace math in one big fat notebook. I love this too. This oh my awesome. gosh! Okay, and it says I love the bit that says notes borrowed from the smartest kid in class. Oh, how funny is that? <laughs> yeah, it actually says that. Okay, so it's almost like oh, you're getting a secret from so someone. You can see yeah. it does explain it very um, easily. Yeah, precisely. so that's one way. Yeah. Um, okay. So as I'm building my website, we're de- dealing with that. But then, if you want, you can definitely do this. This is not intimidating. Should it not be intimidating to parents? Okay, yeah. great. And what is your website? Just JaniceLau.com. JaniceLau.com. Okay, <laughs> good to know. Yeah. So if I do get asked about Still electricity, it. I'll know where to uh, to go again. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, and just one more question on um, friendly activities outdoors. Do you think that's something that should be planned or you just go with the flow? Like, um, do you... Yeah, so I always so I always have to go to the park or playground once a week. Okay. That's a must. Right. Because I don't want them holed up in, indoors, indoors yep. playing with their iPads. I'm trying to get them out. Mm-hmm. So that's already a must, but I don't usually plan until... I don't actually plan. What you're going to discuss. Yeah. yeah, and then when we get there, that's yep. when I say, oh, there's a swing. Oh, there's a, you know, whatever. Got it. A slide okay. or... Or what if the playground, there's just too many kids, it's too crowded. Sure. Yep. Then I kind of decide, okay, maybe if I take them out yep. and then, for example, like the traffic light, mm-hmm. just ha- standing out there and just, and that's math. Yep. And just saying to them, can you count how many, how many minutes does it take for it to move to the next color? Okay. Yeah. And then that's how I explain rate. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And they're so excited because they're like, oh my God, is, is it going to move? Is it going to move? <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Um, so good it ideas. really depends. Um, but again, just going back to what I was saying, you need to know your, what's the interest of your child yeah. and their ability as well. Cause you don't want to, be teaching them something that's way out of their league at the moment. Sure, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's just the balance. Okay. Yeah. And what about when you're on holidays? Do you recommend um, using holidays as an opportunity to... Yeah, you know me. I probably... Yourself? Yes, yeah. I do. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I usually... That one I plan. Okay. So when we were in Europe last 
year. Mm-hmm. Um, I was actually brave enough to take them on my own um, because my husband had a last minute business trip. I so can. we already bought tickets and I'm like, I'm just going to go. Yes, and it's one of my greatest achievements is taking them to Europe on my own, alive. <laughs> so <laughs> you bring them back. Them alive. back. Yep. Um, but I had already planned going to see the Science Museum in London. You know, a lot of museums, because museums are free in, right. in yeah. Europe, right? Mm-hmm. So in, even in Paris, even if it's in French. Right. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I do yeah. plan that. Okay. But also in advance, like when we were going to Paris... I decided that we would take the train because they had already taken the plane. Okay. So I had already explained how the plane works and then explained the train. So Esther and Isaac were like, well, wait, but in between UK and France, there's like an ocean. Mm-hmm. So how do you, are we, where are we? <laughs> so they were, this is another opportunity to explain, well, this is right. when we get into the tunnel, this yes. is how they build it. And they were just like, whoa. Amazed, yeah. And then I explained, you know, when we cross, when we take the Chim Sa Choi line, in Hong Kong, right? That's essentially what a this tunnel is as well. Yeah, and so to them, like, oh, I didn't realize that. So I do try. I mean, definitely, always. Any moment is a learning moment. If I can kind of insert that in, even in holiday, and especially in during the holidays, they're so excited. Mm-hmm. So you kind of want to feed off that energy. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Okay, that's wonderful. I'm just gonna check in uh, with our viewers and see if we've had any questions. So, actually, we have two here. If you, as a parent, aren't very good at STEM activities, what books or activities would you suggest so that both the parent and child do not see the activities as a chore? So I know we've spoken about yeah, these ones. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Um, okay. So they, they, these go to books. Yeah, but also try Scratch Junior. We just talked Scratch about Scratch Junior as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And we like this one. What is your favorite STEM activity? Oh, that's tough. <laughs> oh my gosh, I like everything. <laughs> Maybe not really. No, coding is not the one I like because okay. I don't know how to do it. Right. Maybe that's it. Um, most of the time, I'm anything I think that's outdoors because I'm an environmental scientist. Yes, it's something I'm familiar with. Um, and also, nature is the greatest invention ever. We have never replicated a tree, yeah, <laughs> and how it cleans air and gives us oxygen. Mm-hmm. We've never there's not no machine that can do that for right. us. So, my best time activity is just going out and explaining to them what they see in nature. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Great. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Janice, for all these wonderful tips and tricks you've shared with us today. Yeah, no problem. About mm-hmm. uh, getting our kids excited about STEM. Mm-hmm. Um, before we sign off, just a few quick reminders. Our next Facebook Live is going to be on June 4 and we will be live from the Conrad Fair. So that is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if you want to be reminded about that, just go to our Facebook events page and you can click interested. Um, and we also hope to see a lot of you this Friday at our big summer party. It's going to be at Limewood at Repulse Bay. Um, it's going to be a ton of fun. We are almost sold out, so if you do want to come, make sure you go and buy tickets really quickly. All the details are on our Facebook page. Okay, well, until next time, we're signing off from Little Steps Asia, where we keep you in the know and on the go.